Hello, hello everyone. It's me, I am back again. And today's topic is the overturning of Roe v. Wade and the pros and cons for the disabled community. I would like to state that I am fully aware that this is a very sensitive debate sparking topic. But as always, I will be a verbal prima ballerina in this topic's delivery. Abortion definitely includes the disabled community as will be evident throughout this video. And I would like to also state that my opinion is really irrelevant and this video is a neutral stance on this topic. Without further ado, let's get started. To begin, the pros. Number one, there definitely will be more disabled individual born. Thus, more representation is going to be needed in terms of media representation, film, advertisement, in the Hollywood, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry, in the professional arena, all the above. So this is a nice plug for my channel where we break down the taboos and try to eliminate the stereotypes and promote positivity of the disabled community and beyond. All right. Number two, there should be more accessibility and support for all parties involved, including parents, children, disabled adults, and even healthcare workers. Number three, more love and support of family and the community of said disease or condition of the affected individual. And last pro, number four, there probably will be more activism for civil rights, media representation, and elimination of old biased stereotypes. Now, some cons. Number one, more children disabled or with birth de defects may enter foster care or adoption. These children or children that are considered disabled are less than likely than their non-disabled counterparts to be adopted or reconnect with family members because of many reasons, but most commonly because of perceived bias of a life, a quality of life, and honestly, financial reasons. Number two, which is kind of an addendum to number one, more family and community financial burden. For example, many personal accessibility and support tools are not covered by the insurance. But please check your insurance, try and follow up. This is very dependent on your insurance plan and specifically your the state that you're in and the tool or item being requested. So please follow up with the insurance and check on that. Number three, more mental and physical burden. Honestly, because activism for community and educating the general public is very exhausting. I know this from personal experience. Some days you might not be in the mood to hear something that you have to correct, meaning something ableist, or that advocacy, that time to research different laws, different conditions. It's, it's very exhausting. Even, I'm going to say, having to educate the medical institutions or providers is definitely exhausting and you may definitely want to keep good records, keep good notes, and definitely history of your child and milestones and what has been done in the past, medically and emotionally. All right. Last con would be less access for disabled women to travel to get an abortion or to terminate a pregnancy. Many clinics that are around now were constructed having to follow some ADA guidelines in terms of accessibility. So without that, how accessible can these facilities or rooms or the areas where they're done, how accessible could they be? And also, the point of travel. Yes, there are many states that are going to enact laws 
that will make it legal. But if you're a person with a physical disability and you have to travel, as many of us already know, travel is not easy at all. So that is a, a hardship that may be on this individual that is wanting to terminate their pregnancy. But please check out my video on traveling while disabled or traveling in your wheelchair to kind of get tips and tricks on how to make travel easier if you must do that. And please, if you are in one of those states and offering uh, abortion, please make sure that your facility is accessible for someone that may have a physical disability. All right, now this portion of the video is directed to you, the viewer, on what you can do, how you can be active or advocate on behalf of your loved one. First, you can support your family or friends with disabled children, including in utero, meaning pregnant women. Please support them, offer love and encouragement. The road is not gonna be an easy one, but please be positive, as positive as possible. Try to educate yourself on your views and why you have those views and understand your opponent. Try to understand where they're coming from. One of the principles of a debate is to be able to sort of expect or know what your opponent is going to say. Like if you know both sides well enough, that is a true debate captain or that is one of the help most helpful things in winning a debate. Next. Give any time or any resources you possibly can to your local social services. Please let's make these children with any physical or emotional disabilities, please make them feel loved and encouraged and consider offering to be a foster parent or adopt a child with medical needs. Next, please stop ableist comments from anyone or anything you hear with your ear or see with your eyes, whether it's online or something you see written, please just let's just make this world a better place for the future and do your part. Please support media representation with disabled characters or items, merchandise sold to those with any type of physical differences. And please check out some of my videos on media representation. That is it. We are pretty much done this video. Please, if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much. I appreciate you so very much. Look forward to you viewing my next video. Thank you. Goodbye.